standing outside the presidential suite in a top-secret West London hotel. Why? Because I'm about to talk to a man who for 13 years has fronted one of the world's greatest rock and roll bands. He's booked into this hotel under the name Tommy Atkins, but his real name is David Garn. Oh, oh Dave. Well, how's it going, Joe? Not too bad. Great to see you. I thought I was expecting somebody else, but it's, you know, it's not a disappointment. You're expecting a bevy of women? Oh, well, there was a few girls. I know. Oh, well. I'd love to offer you an aperitif. What have we got here? David had just come back home after performing at over 40 concerts around Europe, and he was eager to share the experience pro to pro. Cheers. Cheers. So far on this tour, I mean, we've done about 40 shows already, a bit more than that, and um, it's hit a stage where it, 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 it's just like some nights you go out there and you just fucking open your wings and you just fly across it and it, the whole thing's brilliant and you know when you get all the crew and stuff that are on the side of the stage and you see look at the corner your eyes and you can see crew people dancing and getting into it and shit as well then you know it's a good one you know it's great essex band depeche mode have been together since 1981 their techno pop sound slowly drifted out of fashion in the uk but in america they just can't get enough However, their new album has been widely reported as signalling a comeback and has brought the band out of hiding to face the music. When I come to England, people start talking about the misconceptions about the depression mode. I've even forgot what they are, so I usually have to be reminded and it's like, oh yeah, right, we are in England now. And people always assume that every time we come back with a record, that it's, that it's some sort of rejuvenation or comeback. Yeah. We, we've always sold a lot of records here, just at certain points our visibility isn't quite as high as other times. Do you know what, to be quite honest, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> hey? But that's rock and roll. Depeche Mode have now reached stadium rock star status, and David has become, to many, a new rock god. Well, he's got on the moon, hasn't he? All the right moves. I don't know if you've, if you've seen this live before. He's, he's just got better and better as the years have gone on. Yeah. Out there. Now my wings are spread. But there's always room for other potential rock gods to spread their wings. Dave said he'd like to see you taking kind of more of the spotlight. What do you think about that? I quite like it the way it is. Now we just totally fucking kick ass. I mean, like, basically, you but know, you when, say it yourself. Now the when Al comes, <laughs> yeah, when Al comes down and get, gets on the drums, and Mark's playing as well. And now I see this thing. I see Mark developing all these little moves, and and he's becoming a rock and roll star. And it, you know, does that make you laugh? No, yeah, I, I look at it with real love and excitement. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's fucking good. It feels good. I know what that feels like now. I didn't know what that felt like for a long while and I wanted it bad. Now I know what it feels like and now I could never do without it. Everybody's got wings, you just got to find them and open them. You know? It all sounded so exciting. Could I spread my wings too? I just felt compelled to seek Dave's advice. If, if I was going to become a, a, a rock and roll man, yeah, if I was just starting out now, I'm a rock and roll a star. Okay, I was just going to say, any tips for me? Because I've got a good sure. voice. Sure. What do you think I ought to do? I mean, I've got a good jacket here. It's obviously quite a nice jacket. I think it would lend itself to a concert setting. I would say get rid of the whole outfit. We went for a face looking like that. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, oh, good, huh? Yeah, I, that's one of the ones we regret, so anything but that, I would say. A tip one. Tip one, you wanna, tell the truth. You've got, you want any kind of relationship to survive, if you want to be a rock and roll star, yeah. tell... She's for the kids. All the time. Okay, tip two. Tip two is stay away from the drink and the drugs, you know? Okay, that's just, tip two. Tip three? Tip three is go out there and fucking rock hard. <laughs> that's tip three. That's the, probably the third and final tip. There you go. Get on with some rocking. Tips from the top there. Time for me to return the favour. How well do you remember life before you were famous? Oh, very well. Yeah? Very good memory, yeah. Do you remember ever going camping? 
at yep. any stage in your yeah. life. Do you remember doing that? You can ask me if I've been like, no. molested as a child. No, no. Know. You carved your name onto a knife at this time. And miraculously, by an incredible miracle, oh, I have no. that knife to present to you on behalf of the chaps at the show. No. Yeah, why? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's your old camping knife. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> do you I really, remember carving that? Did I really do that? That's your writing, isn't it? Do you know what? That is my writing, I think. But I don't remember doing it. Well, I hope you'll keep that. Put it in your trunk I will, with the gold disc. Jerry, can you put that in my box of special keep things? Keep that very specially. And that, that's from Susie <laughs> Holmes's brother. I don't know what his name is. Thank you, Susie Holmes's brother. There you go. And he kept that all this time, and we got it. Is it really real? Yeah, it's really real. I swear to you, on my life, it was produced, our researcher got hold of it. It's absolutely real. We didn't do that. That is yours from whenever. The 70s. Well, you got a coup there, pal. A bit of a coup. Bit yeah. of a coup. <laughs> Dave, it's been great to talk to you. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Painless. Painless. Very painless. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Good luck, everybody.